John was that X factor and you didn't know it at the time, you just felt it and then you could see it. He was literally everything for our program. Hooking up with Coach LeBond, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't be where we are today without him. The Tigers salute two seniors for their hard work and their contributions to the Hook Club over the last four seasons. A dash will separate the beginning and end of your Mizzou hockey career. It's your choice to fill that dash because it's your story. It's your legacy. I think a lot of people went through what we went through. They wanted to have a hockey program. Um, they wanted a place to play that was organized, competitive. The board at the MACHA was very intent on um, following the rules of the ACHA, having a quality league, uh, and really making it something that people wanted to belong to. And as that got around the, the Midwest, teams really came out of the woodwork to join. Arkansas, Missouri State, and Kansas, to name a few. It's the little things that go unnoticed that grow your legacy. Coming in my freshman year, having him there kind of as a staple uh, was great. And then having him for the uh, next few years was great as well. I mean, he he's definitely a presence. So we found a, a gentleman named Todd Barclay to uh, take over as the, as the coach. Um, I wanted to have a year of transition, so I stayed involved as much as I could. I just had my second child and, and wanted to, to be at home more. Um, but he, he did a good job with the team for a couple years. And after a, a year or so transition, I, I took myself out of the GM role and, and really let the team exist on its own after about 2016. So my rookie year, we had, we had a full roster. I was, I was healthy scratched about half the games. We had full team, it was, it was really legitimate. Um, not as great of participation or defense as it practices, but on game days, we were we were legit. So we had a coach our my first year, 2017-18, who uh, moved back to St. Louis, left the role of coach, and we couldn't find anyone to fill it. Kevin Ward's dad was, was coming down, coaching games, um, all the way from the Chicago area for us every weekend, which is just phenomenal because uh, you know, the wards helped keep the program alive for sure at that time too, because without a coach, I mean, you can't, we can't play. What, what do we do? We went from uh, winning a few games to not winning any games. I mean, my fifth year, I think, I don't know if we won a game to be completely honest. We didn't really have any guys, if anybody got injured, there was nobody to really fill spots. So our captain at the time was the, the one running the practices and um, which I don't blame him. I mean, it's hard to practice when you have seven guys out there what are you supposed to do scrimmage against three on three i mean you never say like you can't compete like at least for us we every game we walked into we had the mindset of we can win this game uh, you have to uh, it's, it's sports that's how you have to think about it um but i, I will say there, there were one or two of those games where it was kind of ridiculous like it felt like what are we doing here i know that there was the discussion with a couple of the board members around that time um about do we just fold the team you know do we just pack it in like what do we do here? Because we just can't compete. And a one-timer from the near circle, and it's 10-0 McKendry. The president um, had job, job opportunity to take off the bat, so he left to go take that. Vito then stepped in. So yeah, I uh, took over as president, um, and then it was actually my uh, kind of the roommate because I was like thinking about wasn't really sure uh, my roommate was uh, Drew Russian at the time and he was our accountant um, he kind of pushed for it was like you you definitely could do this but he was handed a pretty tough situation having to take over a team that wasn't totally planned out for the season and then get spun up on everything so came in for tryouts at first couple days was good like decent amount of people and then as it, time continued through the tryouts, kind of more people were like kind of leaving. They're hearing like, oh, this might be a little bit more of a commitment than we thought. Illinois State was our first game in Bloomington. So we take our whole team. We're like, all right, like we got like 14 guys. At that time, we had a couple more guys than, than we ended up with in the middle of the season. And, and we go up to play the game. It's a tight game. We're holding not, I, I, Illinois State close. Stuff gets a little hairy at the end of the game, right? We're sitting in the locker room after we're like, I don't know if we could play Saturday. And we're up in, I was it, Illinois? And we're like, we have six guys. I don't think we could play this game. Because we have a couple guys that are banged up pretty bad that like realistically probably shouldn't be skating. 
it's like, yeah, Milmos is a body. And we're, we're kind of talking back and forth. This is funny because this is where we learned the lesson of how many guys you need to have on an ACHA roster to officially start a game. We're on the phone uh, with Maka and they're like, yeah, you, you guys can't play. You're going to have to forfeit. Uh, I think we had to pay a fine as well. And it was just, just a mess. But then again, all of us kind of got together. We're like, has this happened to anyone ever before? And we're like, no. We're like, well, I mean, we got a first out of the way. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't happen again. So that's how we basically end our first weekend. And after that, it was kind of like, oh, maybe we have an issue here. At the beginning of that year, we had a game against Bradley on the road. And I think we had six forwards and four defensemen and one goalie. We might have even had two goalies, but uh, I just remember being extremely tired after the game. I think game one, we only lost by two or three goals and they had a full roster. I think we, we had more skill than them. Uh, we just couldn't couldn't keep up by the time the second period was halfway done. Back to DeZane, far circle, shorthanded in front for Ivasenko, side of the net to Bob, and he scores. We play McKendry. They're trying to move up to D1, and part of that is you want to have the best goal differential possible. So every opportunity they have to score, regardless of how bad they're beating us already, they're taking. You can't blame them. You know, that's what they need to do. And uh, I just remember, I think the score might have been five or six to nothing in the first period. And uh, they come down, they score one off the rush, and they have like their whole graphics up on the board and their announcers and everything. And it's like goal from Schmiegenhoff and Bliegenhoff assisted by, uh, you know, Lafreniere or something. It was like two European guys, like a Finnish dude, a Swedish dude, assisted by some French Canadian. And presumably all these guys, because half their team was like imports and Canadians, half these guys, I, I assume they go to McKendry to play hockey, probably get partial scholarships because that's how McKendry works. And meanwhile, I'm looking at my bench. We got 12 dudes on there. Some may view hockey as just a sport, but it's deeper than that. It's part of you even when the world is spinning around you. You get about halfway through that first half of the year and, and the board all gathers. Obviously, like quite a few of us live together. We kind of gathered the board and then some of the older guys and we sat, sat around and we said, hey, like what's the best position for for this team? Like it kind of sucked the fun out of hockey and kind of what we built and what we were trying to build. And multiple people were like, maybe we fold just eliminate the headaches. We sit around and we go, okay, well, like if we if we decide to go down this path of folding the, game, folding the team, what's it look like next year? My high school career, uh, same thing kind of happened. L low people on the team. And it was like, if we fold the team now, it's never coming back. And luckily enough, I uh, kind of followed in my dad's, dad's footsteps because he's the one that fought for our high school team. And I called him and he was very informative of like, if you fold, it's it's never going to come back. Well, I don't think we were going to let that kind of be our legacy, you know? Um, we, you know, there are kids who are aware of Mizzou hockey who want to go play there. Um, and we don't want to end the team, you know, for that, just because we couldn't get guys to show up for a season. We got to take this 11 guys. We got to make them as tight as humanly possible. And basically we're gonna go and we're gonna play our artists that we can every weekend. On the bright side of that, when you have a team that small, our like cohesion and how close we were was crazy. That was probably the closest of any team I had been on at my time at Mizzou, even even in the later years when we were a better program overall, that year we were, we were tight. All you have is the person next to you and there's not a lot of other relief coming our way. There's not, we're not picking up some random guy. I mean, it's a second family. I mean, most of the people I grew up playing with uh, from high school to college, even after college, I mean, I, I consider them family. I, I would do anything for them. I couldn't really imagine my life without like being on a team and playing. I mean, that's what I had done since I was five years old. And I think pretty much everyone on the team was the same way. I can confidently say at this point in my life that that decision to go to tryout and then to eventually play for Mizzou Club Hockey is easily one of the best decisions I've made in my entire life. It's shaped so much of who I am today. The hockey guys have never left. We're never going to leave. So Sean Deavers down at the rink, he's, he's really, he was really involved in the, the youth hockey group down there. And he's like, hey, there's this guy that goes to Mizzou. He's a college age kid who plays in this men's league. I think he, like, I think you need to get, like, get him to get him to come play with you guys. And I'm like, all right, man, like I'll float it. Like, <laughs> I'm desperate <laughs> at this point. So I, I wrapped their men's league game and and I catch him afterwards and I'm like, hey, like Holden, like 
I, my name's Drew Rushton, and I'm, I'm with the hockey team. I came in my first year. I, I didn't play the first semester. It's just playing like some men's league and going to school. I thought that, you know, studying mechanical engineering, I didn't have time for hockey, you know. He brings himself in. He brings in Ian Jones, he brings in Colin Jones, and, and that kind of bolsters our numbers up to 14. And we're like, all right, hey guys, we, we got a little bit of a team now. And, and Billy comes back from his co-op, so we get, we get our top goalie back. And it's like, hey guys, maybe we can kind of build something in the second half of the year. And our first road trip was the next weekend, and it was Missouri State. That was our first taste of Mizzou hockey ever. Um, and we got beat 16 to two or something like that, the first game. Um, and there was a shift in that game where we were on the bench and I looked at Colin and I said, I said, I don't know. If, I don't know if this was the right choice. I, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm up for this really, to be honest. Playing with those teams that had deep benches that were all talented, right? If you've got four lines that are, that are getting in and, and scoring goals and battling and, and that you're playing against us who we only have three lines and guys are gassed by the end of the second period. You just, it's very hard to stay competitive. It's owed to those 13 guys on the team that stuck it out for the rest of the year, you know, because those are tough games. I mean, you're getting schlacked every night basically and, and going and playing Missouri's D1, Missouri State's D1 program, you know, in, in the state that we're in. And I think that's kind of the big thing everybody learned that year was, hey man, like it was a tough year, but we can bounce back from it. And, and, and that's the happiest part about it is like, all those guys that stuck it out to the very end, they all came back the next year besides the guys that obviously graduated and stuff, but, but the rest of them all came back. And then Coach Teeter came in and I think that, you know, he was kind of a figurehead for us to, to sort of, to buy into a central figure, you know, to, to listen to. I think that helped a lot. And, and like you said, just buying into it because you start to see results. I think being able to schedule D3 was, good for us. Um, it allowed us to put some wins on our record. And if other people see that at the school, maybe they'll think, hey, the team now, you know, maybe they're competitive. I'll go try out. We had the freshmen that were the cast and Brett Martin uh, and, and company, uh, a few more guys. Um, and that kind of started to propel the team a little bit and, and, and still a little bit of talent and success in the team. And then we get hit with the COVID and everybody's got to stop for a year. And there's a few teams, a few schools still playing, but, but Missouri wasn't one of them. We had our whole schedule built out. We had all of our plans. And I think it was two weeks before the season was supposed to start that the, the school basically said, no off high or no off campus meetings so no practices no games and you know maybe that's not a big deal for soccer we can go to stankowski field and go play or practice or do whatever but for hockey we don't have an on-campus option not only did mizzou hockey survive the pandemic but a phone call reunited two childhood friends he was really interested in, in coming to the team and, and just trying to turn a program around and, and make an impact you know in a different way uh, you know, kind of saving a team rather than maybe joining on a, a really good squad and, and competing right away. Uh, you know, he wanted to be a part of something that we were building. 